In the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia, every hill and hollow serenades you with the sounds of wind and water that flow through some of the richest temperate forests on the planet. But 20 years ago, in the Cold River Valley, another sound began to echo through the mountains. The sound of mountaintop removal. They call this mountaintop removal. They chop the tops off the mountain. They push the rubble, the waste that's left over into the valley. What we have is a triangle. It's an upside down mountain turn, inside out. When it comes to the West Virginia coal industry, Julia Bonds knows what she's talking about. This represents the hollows where people live and the headwaters of stream starts. And they blast away at the seams of coal hidden below. Since the 1800s, Pick and shovel mining was the backbone of Julia Bond's hometown, Marfolk Hollow. In every isolated valley between the Appalachian Hills, miners and their families depended on the company store for food, supplies, medicine, anything from the outside world. Coal mining is, is essentially the hand that feeds you. That's your livelihood. That's, that's how you obtain the, the goods that you have, whatever you have. You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. But when mountaintop removal mining took hold in the 80s, the company store entered a new line, real estate. We're not even allowed to go on this mountain anymore. There's gates practically everywhere on these mountains. They've also cost a lot of jobs because uh, as mining has become more mechanized, you need fewer miners to recover the same amounts of coal. I feel like that they're trying to drive us out of the town, that they need our property in order to expand their facility farther. The company is Massey Energy, the nation's fifth largest coal producer. Massey is the mountaintop removal giant in southern Appalachia. The trouble with bringing buried coal into the open air is that all its dangers come up with it. Coal dust, deafening noise, and flying rock that used to endanger underground workers is now all out in the open. Throw that dust out. You clean it, they don't help every day. And then you gotta get right back out and clean it again. There's one more byproduct of mountaintop removal that especially worries Julia Bonds. This massive slurry impoundment holds five billion gallons of toxic sludge. If an accident with this dam would happen, just like the one in Ines, Kentucky, this waste would hit this cliff beside us, then roll off onto the elementary school below us. Her mountains blasted to gravel, her hometown turned ghost town, the sweet water of valley streams choked and poisoned. Bonds reached a breaking point. Especially the one day when I found my grandson in a stream full of dead fish. That, that really was a slap in the face for me. So in 1997, the waitress everyone called Judy down at the local Shoney's restaurant organized Coal River Mountain Watch. She's traveled to D.C. several times and been an extremely effective advocate on Capitol Hill and with the media. In November 2000, for the first time in nearly 100 years, West Virginians cast their five electoral votes for a Republican. Some of the campaign's key contributors were those running the coal industry. The Bush administration acted very quickly when it took office to completely eliminate an important Clean Water Act regulation that prohibits waste dumping in streams, including the massive waste dumping that the coal industry does. Now all industry can dump industrial waste into the streams of America. In January 2001, Judy Bonds and her extended family were the last to leave Marfa Hollow. Living in a hollow is unlike living any place else in the world. In a hollow, the mountains are so close to you and they're a protection. Now they live in Whitesville, just a few miles up the Big Coal River. But the misery that closed the whole town didn't stop at the border of Marfa Hollow. Cassie is getting ready to do this all over again. Bond's vigorous monitoring and frequent reporting of Massey spills brought about the recent shutdown of Massey's Marfolk operation for nine days. Three years ago, I moved away from the 24-hour-a-day blasting, and I'll not move this time, never again. Judy Bonds has already seen a 1,000 miles of headwater rivers buried under toxic mining waste. Entire towns have disappeared, but like the mile-long coal trains that thunder past her home every night, 
she too is in for the long haul. They deem us a, as stupid, dumb, inbred hillbillies. Well, we're smart enough to figure out what's going on. We'd like for the rest of America to understand what's happening in Appalachia. For Outstanding Environmental Achievement in North America, the 2003 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Julia Judy Bonds of Whitesville, West Virginia.